We're going to make a pork loin into a ham. We're going to cure this pork loin with a dry cure, and we're going to make something similar to a deli ham. Uh, this can also be called back bacon or Canadian bacon, but for all intents and purposes, this is ham. This is a really cheap cut of meat. You can get it at your grocery store uh, or your butcher. It can come in various sizes. This is a whole one. This is a pork loin, not to be confused with a pork tenderloin. This is a lot bigger. This is the same piece of meat that is sliced up to make pork chops out of. I'm gonna take this today and I'm gonna dress it up. I'm gonna cure it and I'm gonna turn it into ham. But we're gonna also inject it with some cure and some maple syrup. It'll make it really juicy and tender, but it'll also speed up the process. So the first step in this is I'm gonna take some of my dry cure, just about a tablespoon, and I'm gonna just add that to, now this is hot water. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna add hot water into my cure. I've got about half a cup there now, which is 100 milliliters. And to that, I'm gonna add some maple syrup. I want this to dissolve. So I'm gonna mix it together. I don't want to inject hot liquid into my cold pork because that wouldn't be particularly safe. So what I also have is I have some ice water. I'm gonna take the hot water, cure and maple syrup, and I'm gonna put it in a little bain-marie of cold ice water and let that cool. You could do that in the fridge. You could do this part of the day ahead of time, but I want that to be cold because I'm gonna inject it in there and I wanna inject cold liquid into my pork loin, not hot liquid. Uh, this is how it came from the grocery store. Uh, you could use it like this, um, but I like to trim it up. I'm gonna put it in the fridge in a container like this. So I wanna trim it so it fits nicely in there. Uh, you would trim it to whatever container you could manage in your fridge, basically. I usually start by assessing pork loin. And you can see here, it's pretty uniform but it has this little muscle here on the side. And I often will like to get rid of that muscle. And it has a fair amount of fat on the top. If you wanna take this fat off, you can take it off. If you wanna leave it on there, you can leave it on there, whatever you like. I'm gonna use my butcher's knife and I'm gonna just start by trimming off the ends. And like I said, this is pork chop meat. So you can just take these end trims and just use them anywhere you might use this kind of pork. Cut off this end here as well. I'm going to use it for sausage. Now there is this fat on here and I might just, you know, quickly sort of pull some of that fat off. And the reason I might want to do that is because I'll use that in my sausage, but also because I want the cure to be able to penetrate the surface. But I'm not too worried about having it be perfectly clean. I'm also going to cut this muscle off just because I like to, because it's fun to practice butchery. So any time I get a chance to sort of just fool around and clean up a piece of meat, I'm in. For the container that I'm putting this in, I'm gonna make two out of this one pork loin. So I'm just gonna cut it down the middle. And now I have two soon to be deli hams. The next step, is to inject our brine into these pork loins. I'm gonna put these pork loins in these containers. So I have two pork loins and I have two containers. This is a good fit. Now we're gonna injection brine the pork loins. You don't have to do this stage. You can just sprinkle dry cure over top of the pork loin liberally. I'm gonna use an injection gun and I'm gonna take that gun Fill the injection gun with the brine, and then I'm gonna inject the loin, and then I'm gonna sprinkle salt over top. A good idea is to take some saran wrap and just place it over your pork loin. When you go to inject the pork loin, it'll squirt all over the place. So I always put a little saran wrap on here. That way I don't have as much of a mess. I'm gonna fill the needle up with my brine, and then I'm just going to Go from place to place, doing one side, then the other, back and forth. You just want to make sure that you're sort of getting into the center, injecting it in there, and I can you can see where 
when it's in, it sort of pops the meat up. You don't need a lot of this. Okay, so now my half a cup of brine has been injected into the two pork loins. I can get rid of this saran wrap. Now the next step is to just take our dry cure and liberally sprinkle it over the loin. So the recipe for my dry cure is available on my channel. It's uh, pretty simple. It's an easy way to get into curing meat. The only thing left to do now is to wait. Okay, so it is two days later and I have taken my pork loin out of the fridge to have a look at it. And as you can see, all of the salt and sugar has basically dissolved into the meat from the top. And we've got some brine in the bottom of the container. All I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna sprinkle some more on top. Just a light sprinkling. I'm not gonna flip it. Today's day two, so I'm gonna wait five more days. Uh, and then I'm gonna take it out of the fridge. I'm this has been about enough. five days now. I'm happy with where this is at. There is a lot of liquid in the bottom of the container. That liquid is a sign that the cure has worked its way all through the meat. This is now a darker color. So that's another sign that this is ready for the next stage. It's very firm to the touch, firm avocado or even a tennis ball. So now my next step with this is I am going to wash it off and then I'm going to smoke it. If you don't have a smoker, you can take this and you can put it in the oven. And what you want to do is you want to pasteurize it, which is you want to bring it up to a temperature 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's my deli ham out of the smoker. Uh, it's nice and cooked. It smells smoky. It smells like ham. Um, yeah, I'm just going to slice a little bit off the edge. Slice off the end to see. It's nice and pink in the middle, which is what we want. There's no gray spot. If there was a gray spot in there after cooking, it would still be edible, but you would probably want to uh, cure it longer next time. So this is deli ham or Canadian bacon or back bacon or loin bacon. We've taken a pork loin, inexpensive piece of meat, and we've turned it into ham. It tastes like ham.